Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russ here, and if you're like me, you're probably pretty excited about all of the new capabilities that these Web3 applications open up for us, but you're also probably a lot less excited about the insanely high transaction fees or gas fees that you have to pay in order to access and use these apps on the Ethereum mainnet. That's where these layer two comes in, these systems that allow for the same decentralization and security principles from Ethereum to be inherited, but allows users to submit transactions and to interact with the blockchain for far less gas fees. And tons of Web3 applications are popping up on these different layer twos that you might want to use, whether you want to collect an NFT that lives on a layer two or participate in DeFi apps, or maybe you just wanna be able to pay somebody without having to pay a $50 transaction fee attached to it. So in today's video, we're going to talk about three different ways that you can bridge over to these L2s so that you can get away from paying these transaction fees. The first way is through native ecosystem bridges. The second way is through multi-chain bridges. And the third way is through a direct layer two on-ramp, which is actually the cheapest way. Now, this might sound a little bit complex, but trust me, it's super easy. and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. The only thing you'll already need to have set up to follow along with this video is some sort of Web3 wallet uh, like MetaMask and potentially have already transferred funds into this wallet, but don't worry if you haven't already done this in the past, I've made a video about this and you can find that in the link in the description or in the top right hand corner of this video. I'll leave a card there so you can go there first if you haven't yet done that. The first way that you can move to layer two is through native ecosystem bridges. And this is just a way of saying that each individual layer two likely has built up a way for you to send funds from Ethereum mainnet to the layer two so that you can use it on that layer two. Here's an example of a native ecosystem bridge. And this one is for Arbitrum, one of the faster growing ETH layer two solutions. And you can see here that it's a pretty simple interface in order to bridge ETH over from mainnet to Arbitrum, well first after after connecting your uh, MetaMask wallet by clicking sign in in the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see how much uh, ETH you have on layer one, uh, how much ETH you have on that specific layer two, in this case Arbitrum, and any amount that you may want to transfer. So let's say that I wanted to transfer, um, let's say the entirety of this balance, so uh, 0.05 ETH over to layer two, I would just type that in and then click deposit. Once I click deposit, likely a MetaMask transaction will come up in the top right hand corner. Yep, you can see it right there. And I can confirm this transaction in order to transfer these funds over to the Arbitrum network. Uh, although there is one problem here, sometimes it can be a little bit expensive in terms of layer one gas fees in order to transfer this over to layer two, which is kind of the problem in the first place. If I'm only transferring $156 worth of ETH, well, do I really want to pay that $35 fee that we can see there in my MetaMask? Likely not, and we're going to get into some other solutions that can allow for you not to have this sort of issue. Another thing that you can do on bridges like these often is to add the layer two network to your MetaMask. You can see a button to do that right here. Uh, what this will do is it will allow you to sort of choose between the different networks that you're currently using with your MetaMask. So you can see here, I have Ethereum mainnet set up here in my uh, in my LED, in my uh, MetaMask, uh, but because I've already added other networks in the past, you can see I can choose from a selection of many different networks that I want to be using. It's going to be important for you to sort of swap over to these different networks inside of your MetaMask um, to make sure that you are connecting to and transacting on the right uh, ecosystem or the right layer two that you wanna be using. And here we are on a different native ecosystem bridge. This time it's for the optimism layer two. So if you want to use an application that's on optimism, you might want to use this bridge. And the same goes here for uh, the Polygon bridge. Uh, Polygon's not exactly a layer two, it's more of a side chain, but there's a lot of things that you can do over on Polygon and you can bridge in a very similar way using this ecosystem native bridge. I'll leave a couple links in the description so you can go to these individual bridges and check them out for yourself. But what if you want something that's a little bit more flexible than just a bridge that only goes from ETH to one specific uh, layer two solution. Uh, well, there's actually solutions for this and they're called multi-chain or multi-L2 bridges. Now these are special types of bridges that allow you not only to bridge from Ethereum to whatever individual layer two you want to bridge to, but it also lets you bridge between the different layer two solutions. Now the beauty of this is that when you're bridging between layer two solutions, you don't have those big gas fees because uh, you're not actually uh, it, it posting any transactions on the Ethereum mainnet, you're simply transferring from one layer two to the other one. So you never have to touch the high gas fee layer. You can just stay and live on the different L2s and transfer between them very easily with these multi-layer two bridges. Let's take a look at one of my favorites. 
This is a multi-layer two bridge called Hop. Now you might recognize this sort of user interface. It's very similar to the native ecosystem bridges we were just talking about, and you can connect in the same way with your MetaMask or whatever Web3 wallet you're using. But there's one main functionality here that makes this a lot better in my opinion, and it allows you to select from which uh, network you want to transfer and to which network you want to transfer. And instead of only being able to go one way or the other way between uh, two set points, Ethereum and Optimism or Ethereum and Arbitrum, this one allows you not only to transfer from mainnet to Optimism or to Arbitrum or Gnosis or Polygon, uh, and they're adding more over time here, but it allows you to transfer between those multiple layer twos. For example, I can transfer here from Arbitrum to Optimism, uh, or I can transfer from Polygon to uh, uh, Arbitrum. It, it allows you to sort of live on these layer twos and transfer between them depending on which applications you want to use. Another similar multi-layer to bridge is called Xpollinate. Now this is another popular option. It allows you again to select which chain or which network you want to transfer to and from. Uh, for this one, you can transfer directly from Ethereum. You can use this as a native bridge or you can like the last one transfer, let's say from Arbitrum to Polygon. Let's say I had some ETH on Arbitrum already and I wanted to transfer that over to Polygon. I could not only choose which networks I want to transfer to and from, but I can choose which token and I want to transfer across that uh, bridge as well. Uh, for this example, we'll use ETH and uh, we'll transfer it to wrapped ETH on, on Polygon, uh, which is something you can use to sort of pay for uh, the different things inside of the different uh, Web3 applications. Uh, and you can, again, enter the amount here. I can enter the max amount here from Arbitrum, uh, 0.16. But let's say I was transferring over something a little bit smaller, 0 0.05. Uh, it would prompt me here to switch to Arbitrum so that my uh, MetaMask is connected to Arbitrum before I initiate this transaction, but the whole transaction submission process is very similar to any other time you may have submitted a transaction on the Ethereum mainnet. But having that ability to transact across layer twos doesn't help much if you're still having all of your funds on the Ethereum mainnet. And you can see this same problem here. If I wanted to transfer from Ethereum to Polygon and I only wanted to transfer 0.05 ETH, well, you can see here the fees because again, I'm touching the Ethereum mainnet, which has high transaction fees. Uh, the fees are rather high. I'm only transferring 0.05 ETH, but the fees are 0.03. So I only end up with 0.01 uh, ETH on the Polygon network. So obviously this is isn't ideal if you don't already have funds on the layer twos, unless you're transacting with a large amount of money where these fees uh, become negligible. And that's where the third option comes in, which is often the cheapest, especially for new users who are just testing things out with smaller amounts of money. Uh, and this is a direct layer two on-ramp. Essentially, this is a way for you to go from your crypto exchange where you may have purchased your crypto and transfer it over directly to layer two instead of not instead of touching the Ethereum mainnet at layer one at all in the process. So going directly from your crypto exchange to layer two. Now, this is a functionality that not all exchanges have yet, uh, but it's one that I think that more and more will implement as they recognize that, hey, people don't really want to transact and pay the high gas fees on the Ethereum mainnet. They instead want to use the applications that are being built on layer two, where you can spend far less on transaction fees and sort of get the same benefits as using Ethereum. One centralized exchange that I know has this functionality is crypto.com. I believe that you can withdraw directly to Polygon. I'm not sure about the other layer twos, but the beauty of this is uh, if you can transfer or deposit directly from an exchange to any layer two, you can use the things we were just talking about, those multi-layer two bridges uh, to transfer from wherever you can withdraw from on your exchange to whatever layer two you want to use. So let's say that you want to use something on Arbitrum, uh, but crypto.com only allows withdrawals to Polygon. Well, you can transfer out to Polygon and then use a hop protocol or, uh, or xpollinate to transfer from Polygon to where you actually want to be Arbitrum or Optimism or any other layer two. Now I'm from Canada and like to use this Canadian exchange called Endax. They allow for multi-chain withdrawals and deposits. Uh, so that's great for Canadian users, uh, but likely depending on which uh, which platform you use, if they do support these uh, layer two uh, on-ramps or these layer two withdraw withdrawals, uh, likely the process will be very similar to what I'm about to show you on Endax.
Once I've logged into my exchange, I can click withdraw and likely here I can choose the asset that I want to withdraw. So I could choose USDC, which is a stable coin, but I could also do this with ETH or some other asset and you can uh, choose to receive or send USDC. So if I want to deposit directly from Endax where I inputted my Canadian dollars to buy ETH or to buy USDC, I could click send here and then I could choose which chain I would want to uh, withdraw or deposit to. Uh, it looks like the networks are sort of paused here for on index currently, uh, but maybe for Ether, this is a little bit different. Yeah, you can see that you can uh, deposit this to Ethereum or to Binance Smart Chain. Um, the same goes for different tokens here. Like if we wanted to use Polygon's native token, I could send this to Ethereum or Polygon or the Binance Smart Chain. But as long as I can get to one of these layer twos that can use the, uh, the multi-layer two bridges, I'm all set. So if I wanted to purchase some Matic, which is like the gas token for the Polygon ecosystem, I could go here and then and, uh, deposit directly to the wallet address um, that I'm currently using on Polygon. So by using these direct layer two on-ramps provided by exchanges uh, that allow you to withdraw from the exchange directly to the layer two without touching Ethereum mainnet, you can sort of uh, avoid Ethereum mainnet fees at all costs and uh, just simply stay on these layer twos. And at that point, you can connect to whatever Web3 application on these layer twos that you want to and transact to taking advantage of these super cheap fees. And a quick thing that I want to make note of, if you are transferring onto these layer two, you might want to double check what that layer two uses as its native fee. Uh, different layer twos may use different tokens to pay for the transaction fees. Even though they are very low, a lot of these layer twos do have these transaction fees, but they're cents instead of uh, the tens or hundreds of dollars. Uh, so for example, uh, on Optimism or Arbitrum, uh, they use Ethereum as the native token to pay for gas, just like you would be used to on Ethereum mainnet. But one example of something that's a little different is if you're transferring to the Polygon ecosystem, well, they use the Matic token to pay for their gas. So if you're transferring to Polygon, you might want to purchase Matic inside of your centralized exchange and transfer that over first so that you can have the gas to power the transactions that you want to do on the network. But once you are on these layer twos, you can do all of your favorite blockchain things without having to pay the expensive transaction fees. Uh, maybe you want to collect a music NFT on a platform like Mint Songs, or maybe you want to play around with DeFi and lend and borrow your assets on a platform like Aave, you might be familiar with on the Ethereum mainnet. Well, there's actually Aave as well as many other applications on these layer twos that allow you to use the same functionality without paying the high transaction fees. Uh, this is the future of Ethereum and blockchain scaling. It's not to all be transacting on Ethereum. It's to be sort of bridging across and using these layer twos where we can benefit from the same levels of decentralization and security that Ethereum has without having to pay for it on, on an individual user basis. So I really believe that this is the way that these uh, blockchains are going to go, especially these smart contract platforms uh, like Ethereum uh, is to use these layer twos as the solution rather than continuing to pay these fees on layer one. And I will admit it is a little bit complex and hard to follow at times with how to use this. The user interface isn't the greatest for all of this bridging and for using MetaMask, uh, but it just reminds me that we are so early in this ecosystem and learning this stuff and putting up with the sort of friction in the user interface is sort of an evil that we're going to have to put up with for the time being uh, because we are the people heading west, uh, the pioneers sort of discovering this, this place and discovering what we need to make it better for future users. So I think that it's just a product of being here in the space as early as we all are. But with that said, that covers the three ways that you can start moving over to layer two. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. There's more content coming like this all the time. And with all that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out and I'll see you next time.